Americans are among the biggest consumers of ultra-processed foods in the world. In fact, ultra-processed foods make up more than half of an adult's diet and two-thirds of a child's diet. Those are the findings uncovered in a new CBS documentary that looks at why these foods have become so common in our diets and how gaps in federal regulations are failing to keep pace. And, you know, we learned something in terms of what Congress did 50 years ago. The Congress had the guts to say to the tobacco industry, very powerful people, sorry, you can't cause hundreds of thousands of people to die every year by enticing them to smoke. You see the food industry in some ways akin to big tobacco Absolutely. decades ago. Absolutely. And in fact, their strategies and their tactics are akin to big tobacco. Joining us now is CBS News correspondent Adam Yamaguchi from Los Angeles. Adam, thank you for joining us. So why are ultra processed foods so pervasive in the American diet and what could they be doing to our bodies? Well, we eat so much ultra processed food because it's convenient, it's readily available, it's cheap, and it tastes really good. So we just can't seem to get enough of it. And one of the uh, concerns, though, is that as we consume so much of this ultra-processed food, ultra-processed food is easier to overeat. It's robbed of moisture and water, mm. so your body doesn't realize it's full until you've consumed quite a bit of that food. And so that overeating leads, obviously, to obesity and the number of obesity-related ailments. Um, heart disease is the number one uh, cause of death amongst Americans by, by a mile. And that is all linked to overeating, diet, and lifestyle choices. Adam, how are gaps in federal regulations threatening the nation's health? Yeah, so one of the most interesting things that we found in the course of this uh, documentary was just how easy it is for a food company to get a product or get ingredients, preservatives, and chemicals into the market. So there are a couple pathways for this. You can petition, petition the FDA to approve a product, or you can take the route that most of the time is utilized by food companies. So you and I could start a food company tomorrow. We can introduce a number of chemical additives into that food product that have never been on the market before, that have not been thoroughly tested. We hire a scientist who says, well, these chemicals are somewhat related to other chemicals that are already in the market, so we can generally recognize these products as safe. And then tomorrow, we're in business. And it's only until or unless that product or that chemical at some point is linked in, through, via research to some health ailment or hazards that the FDA would conduct a thorough review. And that's how we've ended up with over 10,000 or so chemicals on the market. You compare that to Europe th that doesn't have those similar protocols, they have less than 400. Talk about some of the people you interviewed for the documentary. Yeah, so one of the, one of the stories that, that really kind of resonated uh, and sat with us was uh, we met a, a single mom in North Carolina. Uh, she, and, uh, she has a 13-year-old uh, daughter who was diagnosed pre-diabetes uh, a year ago. Um, daughter and mother had grown up eating, consuming the vast majority of their calories uh, via ultra-processed foods and takeout. Um, daughter at uh, the age of 13 is diagnosed pre-diabetes and decides, I need to change my life. She cuts out ultra-processed foods almost entirely and loses 50 pounds in, in the course of one year. And her mom uh, had started to catch on um, and sort of took, taking her daughter's cue had begun to cut ultra processed foods out of her diet as well. Just a few days after we interviewed uh, mom and daughter, uh, the mom passed. Mm. Uh, she suffered a, a, a blood clot. She had hypertension, a history of diabetes, and was severely obese. These are the stakes when it comes to what we're putting into our bodies. You went to a food and tech conference as part of your research. What did you learn? It was a sort of a cross between a county fair and the CES, the big tech conference that we see every year. And it was kind of a celebration of, of how technology has enhanced the very food we eat. And it was kind of a reminder that so much of what we eat today is just as much a product of technology as it is food. We saw the latest and greatest uh, flavorings, food additives, preservatives, and, and, and ultimately finished products. 
And so it was kind of a, it was a, it was a wild and overwhelming experience. And you know, one of the things that I, sh I should mention coming out of the conference is that while we talk about some of the hazards of ultra-processed foods, we also have to recognize what they have done for society and, and for humanity. Um, ultra-processed foods have um, helped alleviate hunger around the world mm -hmm. by making food cheap and plentiful. Um, preservatives, like longer shelf life, has allowed for us to curb the amount of food waste that we see every year. So again, there are a lot of positives that technology has brought to the food that we eat. Perhaps the, the, the question is just how healthy is all of that? Adam Yamaguchi, thank you for your time. We'll be watching. Watch the new CBS Reports documentary, Ultra Processed, How Food Tech Consumed the American Diet, beginning Sunday night by downloading the free CBS News app.